Hey everybody, it's your Survivor buddy Gordon Holmes here with your exit interview for Survivor 45, Episode 7. We got a double elimination, talking to Sifu first. Uh, before we get into that, a couple of quick orders of business. First of all, my graphic novel is available, written and illustrated by yours truly through Legacy Comics. It's called The Bad Guy. Uh, it's about a professional wrestler, but it's not really about professional wrestling. It's, it's really about life and love and all those things. So uh, check it out if you enjoy this channel, you enjoy what we do here, you enjoy comics, you enjoy wrestling, you just want to help us out. It's five bucks. It's available at LegacyComics.com. I'll put the link down below. Uh, also, my episode recaps for Survivor are available every Wednesday evening uh, at my Substack. Again, link down below. Uh, we have the full recap of everything that happened in the episode as well as individual grades for the players based on how we thought we did, thought they did uh, in that episode. Survivor Power Rankings are, are, are chugging along. Franny Merritt from Survivor 44 is doing a fantastic job. She's actually winning, not surprisingly, uh, but her insight is on point. Um, it's really a great way to, to, to lead up into your Survivor episode every Monday here on this YouTube channel, check it out. Uh, finally, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, do all those things. Does us a big favor, gets us in front of more people. The more people see us, the more stuff we can do. All right, with that said, let's see what Sifu has to say about last night's elimination. Oh my goodness. I don't give, an out, give out an award for best background. But if <laughs> I did. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Dragon Ball Z, all that stuff, man. It's me. Nice. <laughs> so I'm watching last night, and as you get voted out, I can't help but think that there's just like a jungle full of sticks that are like, good, serves him right. He's been punching us all season. <laughs> they're coming after me, man. Yeah, and they're like, that guy had it coming. Um, you mentioned a, a spidey sense um, that kind of that kind of that clicked when you, when you felt like you were in danger. Um, describe what that's like. Is that just a matter of how people are treating you differently or, or what exactly, you know, made you feel that you, your number might be up? Uh, and you're speaking of the last tribal? Yes, exactly. Yeah, so you know, you do have sort of a spidey sense because of the energy that you can get from people, and I think that I felt that as soon as I landed on Lulu Beach. I mean, that was like an, an energetic shift. I don't know if you like you could see my energy was different. I wasn't, you know, as out, as as uh, outgoing because I could feel the energy around me. Like no one's looking at me, no one's talking to me. And then when I would go around and talk to people, I did try to place, uh, you know stuff on bruce and this and that but it wasn't re reciprocated can't speak to that uh but yeah you definitely it's okay you only have like 40 interviews so you're fine <laughs> yeah. oh good but yeah it's just one of those things that you start sensing and you feel it and it's an impending feeling and it's one of those things that you hope you can redirect you hope you did enough you hope you said enough but obviously because i'm talking to you i didn't so <laughs> now, did you did you sense that at all at the tribe? Because it, it seemed like you were going to go home the tribal that Sean tapped out. Uh, did you sure. feel that at all then, or did maybe the the Reba three do a, a good better job of 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 fooling you? Yeah, so I had a little sensation of my name popping up, but it wasn't as present as it would have been if Sean stayed. Uh, you know, because I had no clue it was a live tribal. He was quitting during the tribal and it wasn't something we knew prior so when i saw my name i had the inclination to walk up to him and said who voted sifu and i was like where are we going with this and so that gave me two names because i knew it wasn't mama j i actually had a decent connection with her it wasn't shown much but i did and uh, i was like d or j d or j it's one of you two you know and so it really just led me to play the game a little bit different uh, after seeing your name. It's a physical re reaction, you know. It's very convenient that they each had a letter to go by, to, to go back and <laughs> forth. Um, but so going to that tribal, uh, obviously we learned that D was the one that voted for you. Uh, Jay kind of fell on the sword as, as, a, as a part of a strategy. Uh, but it's interesting you said that you and Mama Jay had such a close relationship because, you know, at the, at the merch feast, she was the first one to be like, you know, it was Jay Maya that voted for you. When you go back and watch it and you see these people that you felt you were tight with actually, you know, are actively, you know, manipulating you. Uh, what, what's your take on that? Is, is it tough to watch or is that just part of the game? She's playing her game and she's doing it well. And I can respect that. You know, I really can. Uh, I think that she did the best she could to take herself, you know, further away from that. You know, any any one trying to target her direct alliance partner. So I think she did great. I still, no matter what, still equally had J and D as the equal targets of who it could have been. Mm -hmm. And uh, during my, during the wild trial, tribal with Caleb, if you watch that back, 
you'll see me say, man, this could really change everything while I'm voting because I was going to vote D or J. And then that would have been the person that gone out. So I think about that moment too a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, your game, like it was interesting because I felt like Reba didn't value you as an Alliance member, but we never got a great reason outside of in the early days, it seemed like you were kind of playing like a Tony Velachos esque kind of game, like <laughs> running around as spy shacks. W were those things that stuck with you or were there other things we didn't see that people were more wary about trusting you? Yeah, I think that was solely it. It was it was not necessarily, oh, we don't like this guy or anything. It was more of an easy target. Mm -hmm. You know, it was easy to paint. Like whenever Austin and Drew found their their idol, oh, Steve was digging up. That's you know, they were able to deflect and push stuff towards me because then I had already done something similar. I'm looking, I'm hiding. So it was more of an easy. I mean, we had a kumbaya. We were meditating. We were doing tai chi in the beach. Uh, so there was a, and we were winning, you know, we were a very winning tribe. So we didn't have a lot of uh, negative impact. And I, I certainly didn't. Yeah. Uh, you know, as, as we do exit press, like I didn't get the impression for a second that people didn't adore you just, they, sure. they were wary about working with you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't, again, hindsight, right. I don't think uh, I gave them a reason besides just being that individual that was doing those things, but no, there was no crazy, uh, you know, big blow ups or anything like that that would have caused it to be a uh, super uh, issue, you know, a major issue. Is it possible there were too many air guitar performances? You know, I could also say that there should be real guitar. Yes. <laughs> but yes, I I, uh, I did do a lot of air guitar, but we had a song, man. It's called Four Steps Down. And we all jammed that song. You know, <laughs> I told fun. Jay Maya, I told Jay Maya, the fact that you and her didn't leave that island with an album is like the biggest mistake in Survivor history. Uh, right. I know. I know. But we have one song, Four Steps Down. So we'll, we'll rock that out. OK. Um, <laughs> Austin found an idol. Uh, him and Drew seem to have like a little bag of goodies based on their time out there. Did you know about it? Did you did you have suspicions? Um, I definitely had suspicions because I was looking and I didn't find anything. So that's mm. why I created my fake idol because in this game, there's a lot of uncertainty. So if I can create a little bit more, it does potentially put a target on my back, but it also does the same, you know, the opposite of def deter people. So um, I was aware that they probably had something going on. They had an idol or something like that. So, okay. Uh, we do a word association here to get to know your tribe mates a little bit better. I'll give you someone's name. Give me the first word, a couple words that pop into your head. Uh, and let's start off with Jake. You said Jake? Jake. Boston. Okay. Uh, Kendra? St. Louis. <laughs> uh, Kelly? Fun. Uh, Jay Maya? Musical. Uh, Sean? Heartwarming. D. <laughs> Do we mute? Can we mute? But uh, ble bleep. If you swear, time? I'll bleep it. I'm messing with it. Uh, no, D. Uh, very warm. Okay. Uh, Caleb. Smiles. Boy, warm is way different than. Can you bleep out if I swear? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, let's try Drew. Smart. Okay. Uh, Emily. Hmm. Uh, adaptable. Okay. Uh, Julie. Mama. <laughs> uh, Bruce. Uncle. <laughs> uh, Austin. There are no wrong answers here. Yeah. <clears throat> Strong. Okay. And let's finish off with uh, Katura. Um, Katura, I said St. Louis, but I also think, uh, you know, empowering. Okay. Um, I, you know, Survivor is a game of twists. You know, Jeff Probst loves them. Uh, it was kind of cruel last night that the losing tribe, uh, the person that that uh, went home, wouldn't make the jury. Um, I can't think of anything worse than than being like the last person. So uh, tell me, tell me, you know, as as you you're getting snuffed and you're walking back, and you know, just the realization that like your story ends there has got to be rough. There's, a, I have an open cut here. If you want to pour some more salt in there. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> Just messing with you, man. Uh, I I think it was. What's it like, Sifu? 
I wasn't lying. I think it was one of my, you know, it was surreal because I was like, man, I'm right there. I'm, I could be on the jury. I could decide the fate. And then it's pulled from me, you know, and it hurt. And it was devastating, but I made the merge. I got a chance to play this beautiful game. Uh, it just was one step short. Yeah, not four steps down. It was three steps down. It was <laughs> three steps sad. Um, you're exactly. a fascinating fella. Um, Thank you. And I feel like there's pro and because Reba was winning, we didn't get to see them as much. I feel like there was a ton of stuff you did out there that we didn't see that I want to see. What did we miss? Uh, we had sing-alongs on the on the bamboo, uh, you know, laying there with the hard knots in your back. Um, we had some wild cats come up to us, and I was like purring back at them. Yeah, wild crazy cats. Yeah, these are wild cats. So like, oh, I mean, Fiji. Yeah. They're, crazy they don't they don't like shy away like normal cats they're like coming up on you and like i'm taking your stuff yeah it's crazy uh but yeah we had a lot of times out there you know i started the fire day one that gave me some good morale um we had when we started the fire we were talking about taking a girl out on a date and how, it, how that's how we're going to relate to making it go and and stuff like that we came up with all these fun things and one of the funnest things i ever did out there was crab hunting with drew we, I mean, I'm talking dying, laughing, falling over, trying to get catch crabs, uh, which is an odd statement to say, but uh, <laughs> it was definitely one of the best times of my life. Uh, it, it was, um, you know, it's weird that the tribe merges and then immediately gets split again. Uh, if there hadn't been a split, what do you think, where do you think the vote would have gone if it had been the entire 12 person tribe with one person having immunity? And well, let's assume, let's assume D1 immunity because of the toe. Uh, but yeah. where do you think that vote would have gone? I think it would have. I think it would have steered back to Caleb or Emily. I mean, they, they are the deciders. They 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 are kind of the kings and queen in that position. The king and queen in that position because they can go left or go right as a as a di as a dynamic duo, and they can make you stronger, this side stronger, that side stronger. So I think we would just go back with that. I mean, unfortunately, it would suck for Caleb because put him right back in the hot seat, but. Well, Sifu, you're a really fascinating guy. And, uh, you know, I'm going to send you on your way. But before I do, let's... Uh... Hey! Let's, what do we got? What do we got? Right. Where are we going with this? All right, four steps down. No, that's four all I got. I got nothing. I got nothing. Down. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Hey. Dun, dun, dun. Four, four steps down. Yeah. <laughs>